阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。So、um, today we keep it short, straight to the point. We're going to have a series of questions to run through with.、Um, Venerable Cheng De is、uh, currently busy. To,、um, as of last week, he's trying to answer the question by Friday, but he's like, "Sorry, man, I got 500 meetings in UK and all that." So he will have one-to-one -one call with me next week, and I'll I'll tell him what we talk about today、um, in terms of questions, and he will also answer every single questions、uh, you submitted through me. So I'll I'll make it into English and relay back to you again.、Um, but this one is、um, you know this few questions we can talk about together, and also、uh, we can also introduce about you know what Buddhism is. These are very practical questions, and a lot of people ask me in work. As well, like what? Is, why is Buddhism this and that? And if so, I mean, if if we do that, then you know, won't 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 this happen? Like vegetarianism and stuff like that.、Um, before that, guys, do you have do you guys have anything to share about you know our session last week when Venerable Chandra is here? Any other questions? No. Okay, we'll just go straight into it.、Um, Since we are in English, there's no need for me to read from Chinese again. So、we'll、go straight to English. Okay, so one of the questions we have last week is:、um, before that, we should do introduction. I'm sorry.、Uh, what's your name? I'm Jamie. Damien. Damien.、Uh, Quinlan. Quinlan.、Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm Dylan.、Um, so Damien, where, where do you?、Um, what, what, do, what are you currently studying at? I'm in high school, Cumberland High School. Cumberland High School. See. Oh. And、um, yeah, like, is there anything you want to do when you go to uni, or it's too early、uh, to tell? I'm not sure yet. Okay. Yeah, not sure yet. Still, yeah, take your time. Yeah. And I'm Dylan, and I'm currently,、uh, you know, helping out the temple in youth group, and sometimes there's chanting in the temple.、Uh, I heard that you guys are in this way session as well. Yeah,、right? we go to the one.、Um, it's like down a bit further into school. Ah,、uh, on Saturday. Yes, I is it in Alex classes? Oh,、uh, we used to be in that one.、Like、used to be in that one. She does the little, I think the little kids.、Mm. How did she do in her teachings? It was good. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> oh, you can be honest here, man. <laughs> she's actually、uh, in our group, youth group as well, but she's busy. It's been ages since we've been there. Michelle, Nini, right? Nini, Michelle, and Alex. Yeah.、Oh, how long ago was that? Oh, so who's teaching right now in these good classes? I think Miss Michelle's still taking the、um, the younger kids,、mm. but then there's like a older kids. Miss Michelle's sister is、mm. is also in the, in the class.、Aren't in the same class. Yeah. So right now you're in the year ten, year twelve age, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Going to the, oh my god, HSC. Good time, man. Good time. Um, all right. So I'm I'm gonna go straight to the point, but yeah. Maggie, could you introduce yourself briefly? Hi, Maggie. Everyone knows me. <laughs>、um, are you brothers? Yeah. 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 The eyes, man. Look at that. I'm Jenny. I just finished HSC last year, so I'm very into it. See. I'm Jennifer. I'm Emily. Nice to meet. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> welcome, welcome.、Uh, so, if you're at home, and next time you feel free to join us. We usually have a meeting every fortnight, if situations allowed. And we have Venerable Wu Ling.、Uh, I don't know if you heard of her. Wu Ling is、uh, American monk. She's from America, but she followed Master Ching Kong and become a monk back in eighties. And now she's living in Australia, but she can't because of health reason to come to here physically.、Uh -huh. So she always have online sessions, and I'll, if I can, I will be there helping to host the online session on Teams.、Um, so if you need anything, you know, if you want to join every third Sunday of the month, let me know. I'll add you in.、Uh, other than that, we might have gathering time to time. You know, every one month, every two months,、um, barbecues or you know rotations like hot pot or something like that.、Um, yeah, we're still planning the next one, so. Okay, so back to the point on Q and A, right? The questions for everyone. So, very good questions. When Buddha was born, he took seven steps, and said,、um, "I alone am 
am the world， 所以是,是天上天下为我独尊 ，right？ I am I alone am the world on at one point up to heaven and one hand up one hand down and later he says that he is not special and a normal human beings so it contradicts isn't it it's like okay now you're special and common sense dictates that you a baby that came out less than what few hours can walk on land and point up and down um there's two ways we can look at this right of course in our modern sensibility everything does not make sense right We can, you know, something we can put it in questions and stuff like that. And in Buddhism, we follow from the the one that everyone can accept, right? Where the Buddha says, "I'm not special. I'm equal with everyone else." I would say when Buddha enlightened, he would say, "Every sentient beings, 一切众生皆有如来智慧德相 Every sentient beings have Buddha's ability, nature, and uh, look um, the." Um, The merits and virtues, the abilities, the superpowers—we call it superpowers.、Uh, because, but he did mention on the second half, because of wandering thoughts that we just talked about this now today. Because of wandering thoughts, we cannot reach that primal state. I mean, that 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 nature state of abundance. So we are perfect in the beginning, but think of like moon, right? We are like that. Eternal in there and not changing, but because wandering thoughts, we thought the reflection on the water is us. So that reflection of moon on the water is twisted, is up and down, left and right, and lots of dramas and all that, right? And we thought this is me, but the actual person is not changing. It's still that beautiful, illuminating bulb of light. So put it that way, Buddha and other people is the same. We call ourselves ordinary because we lost sight of ourselves, how capable we are, because we have so much wandering thoughts. Like you know, in modern terms, we can say self doubt, self sabotage, self、uh, immolation, self、um, self depreciation, extreme self depreciation, and all sorts of mental health. Right, that curb us from believing we can do it. At the same time, of course, there another end which is arrogance. Which is you know I'm better than you,、uh, holier than thou. You know I'm Buddhist, so, so I should be, or I'm Christian, I'm better than you, or I'm in this group of people, I'm better than you from that group of people. So that one is also another extreme. Buddhism is all about moderation, and the reason he says I'm、uh, he's not special and normal human, like everyone else, came from here. You and I, we're not different. Essentially, if I Cut down, cut through all these layers of looks and you know time and all the conditions. You and I are actually make our same block. We came from the same source. The question is, our development goes with when we have wandering thoughts. So this is how Buddhist、um, philosophy or Buddhist teaching goes. One wandering thoughts give rise to many wandering thoughts. So we 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 didn't lose our true nature, but we have taken wrong turn. Wrong priorities. We thought reflection is us. We thought the shadow is me. We forgot because when we look, when we use our sight, right, we only can see others. We can't see ourselves, right? Without mirrors, I can't see myself. So I thought you and you are like how is me? So everything I do has to emo,、uh, compare with how. Everything I do has to compare with Emily. Everything I do has to compare with Maggie. So I forgot that there is me, as in the true nature. It's always there. It's always, you know, shining. It's always perfect abundance. How do we get back from that, right? We need to help from mirrors. We need help from, you know, the teachings. Teachings like a mirror, trying to reflect us and say that you are like this,、uh, you're perfect like this. The question is, why are we so having so many shortcomings that we cannot? We, that we look at Buddha is like there, right? We look at Buddha is like he's some someone we cannot touch. Someone we cannot reach. There's understand. There is a problem here as well in 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 Zen, like in Chan Buddhism, or some some of the monk, you know, the patriarch monk. They say that do not push Buddha to a level where you can't reach him. That's not the point of Buddhism. The point of Buddhism is to realize the path he has realized, walk his path so that you become him. He is just simply like a mirror. 
like, like how to say, you want to be a doctor or you want to be someone else. You have a role model. Do you guys have role models? In a sense? Or any idols or any, anyone you really like, you want to be, right? There's got to be someone or something or some ideas he's trying to be. That's why we, call, we have ideas, right? And, and to mold yourself to that person, you need to understand how he thinks, how she thinks, how she acts, you know? How he, how he behaves around other people, all right? Okay, put it simple. When you fell in love with someone, everything she do, everything she say, you'll be like, okay, I'm trying to follow up. You know, I'm trying to follow through with them, right? Of course, that one is a far cry from what actually is in Buddhism. So something like that for, for, for Buddha, we, we model ourselves after his action, not because he tell you so. He cannot force you. But he can tell you like, this is how I did. You know, I started as normal people just like you. Tons of trouble, commitments, issues. And then now I have to work my way through these problems. That's why we have Buddha story here. Talk about his past life, talk about his process, how he get to become the Buddha. And speaking back to this, understanding this theory, and then you look back at Buddha's birth, the miracle he performs. Instead of saying that this is odd in our sense, why not we think about what he did is actually normal. But for us, we can't do that because we lost that ability. So on the other hand, everything he did, you can do. It's just you can't, you can't realize it because first thing, there's doubt. Second thing, there is this, um, we call it common sense. But in our world, our common sense is like common sense for ant. It's different from common sense for human. What the ant sees is their colony, is their little world, which is beautiful and powerful, but there's, there's still an ant. Compared to ant, humans have seen different things. The moon, the atmosphere, the, the stars, right? So ant could not fathom what the human can fathom. And then for human, it's normal. I can, you know, I can walk in the 3D world, I can go up to spaceships, even more than human compared to human 200 years ago. Oh, you can go to the moon, preposterous. You might be tied up to the stake and being burned or something. But now you're not. Now it's like going to the moon takes a bit of science, of course, a lot of money from the government, and then you get up there, right? So what Buddha can realize is like, you actually can do this. You know, this, this, this thing he performed, you can do this. Of course, you don't do it for the, for the sake of getting fame and getting worship. Then he's not Buddha. Then he's ordinary people. When you have that taint, which, which is greed, hatred, ignorance inside, you cannot perform this kind of thing. So back to your point, everyone has the same quality as Buddha. That's what he's trying to say. I have this ability to show you that I come down here not because of my, not because I have no choice, because I came here on my own accord to show you what is the most valuable thing a human being can achieve in this short span of life, 80 years old. He appeared for 80 years in our world show us that he's not some magical being stay for like two, 300 years. He shows some realistic time span, lifespan to us who will live up to 80 average, tell us that how you achieve his achievements within one lifetime. So that's the point of he doing the pointing up and pointing down and seven steps. Of course, there are closer read on this. I really hope I can share with you again, share with you again when venerable gives his you know, bigger perspective in this. So, but that's the basic ideas. Um, these are not contradict with each other. Um, he only say that, oh, I couldn't, I do the same as you are because humans like, you know, talking to, talking to kids, you don't, you don't give adult talks. Some kids can take adult talks. Some kids cannot, right? You have to be like, oh, uh, you know, uh, this is like ABC. So basically you have to smote, you have to, deliver it the way they can understand it. And then when they grow up and like, oh, dad, mom, that's how it is. And then you can give them the real truth, give them the whole thing. Before that, you tell them everything, they only take 10% of it and then they continue playing their toys. So, so it's a progression thing, yeah. So second thing, is human life just as valuable as mosquitoes? Um, very good question. That's an, another Zen uh, Gong An. Go to your four symbol. So does dog have Buddha nature? All right, this chance to ask about this. Um, 
there are two ways. First thing is, okay, if we talk about, like we talk about substance and phenomenon, right? Substance and, mm, let's not go there. Essence and like, in, theo in theory, in, in, in essence, everyone has Buddha nature that equates us with every sentient beings, even trees and mountains. But in practicality, right? Killing a mosquito and killing a human is an entire different thing. Killing mosquito incurred killing karma. Killing a human also incurred killing karma. But killing a mosquito will not incur a penalty of getting um, jailed or death sentence. Killing a human will incur that penalty, isn't it? So the consequences can be different. And we can argue that from this, we can say that mosquito and human does not have an equal weight in life. But if we talk about practicing the path of enlightenment, if we use that mindset, um, if we have that kind of mindset and say, since the mosquito is less valuable than human life, I can just do this without worrying about consequences. Wrong. Consequences will always be there, right? Buddhism is built on karma. The whole teaching of Buddhism without understanding of karma, it can be dangerous. It can be used in a very wrong way. Um, understanding karma is like a, it's like, this is fire, don't jump to it, you get burned. Because what you did will lead to fire pit. This is beautiful flowers, this is a beautiful um, place, uh, this is a, a, a desirable condition, you know. This is what you want to do in order to get there, that's number one. So, when we talk about mosquitoes, we talk about all these pesky pests and stuff like that, they are pest control and everything, those are for practical reasons. Sometimes you cannot control it, like council regulations, stuff like that. If you can't control it, um, in Buddhist community, there is a saying you can chant sutra to dedicate to them. If you have no choice over this, you know, your property have to do this because of regulation. You have to chant to them. In Toowoomba, there's a case study. Uh, when they trying to cut the trees to open up for the uh, temple to be built in Toowoomba, um, they pray to the tree gods or to the Buddha to inform the sentient beings to move out. So they cut the trees after three days. That's what they did in Taiwan. So they copy paste the action in Toowoomba, Australia. However, when they cut the trees on, you know, on, on Toowoomba after three days, the tree gods, the sentient beings, come, in, come into the dream of one of the monks and say, could you please give us seven day notice, not three day notice. <laughs> it turns out Australian, um, not just Australian people, Australian sentient beings, the spirits, also take quite a bit of time to get things done. So uh, instead of three days, they take seven days. So it's a, it's a tradition that was been done for thousands of years, but, and, and we, we, we move it to here and they appreciate us informing them so they can move their spirits, but and animals as well. So this is something we, we, we have to understand. We actually are not as limiting as we believe ourselves to be. Like we always have the understanding, of, oh, that's all we have, you know. Science tells everything about us. No, this is human science. I'm talking about Buddhist science, the Buddha science. It's still science, but it's a science from a perspective of someone who can see bigger. It's like science for ant is building a colony, getting food. Science for human is the earth scale. We can take more stuff to do because our ability, our comprehensiveness is bigger. Science of Buddha is beyond the consciousness. Construct of the mind is nothing. It's they understand how mind works and how minds break, like men, mental breakdown and all that. He understand how this works. He understand life and death. That's science. It's just we can't observe it because we don't have the ability to re, re, uh, return back to us. So back to the point at hand, animal have sentient beings, have, have conscience, have sentience, but they do not have faculty like we have because of their karma. So understand karma, right? Cause and effect. What makes a person insect? What makes a person human? What makes a person animal? What makes a person heavenly being? What makes a person bodhisattva, Buddha and bodhisattvas? Like Venerable has mentioned this morning, right? Good deeds, bad deeds. It all boils down to this. What is good deeds, right? You're benefiting more people. You're actually servicing people. You actually care about people, all right? From your own parents. That's that one. If you can't even do that, the very basic requirement, then everything else is a bit 
ungrounded. It's not real. Like no matter how much, how many, how many good you did, you feel like something's lacking in the family piece. So start from family, your siblings, your wife, your your friends, and then your your world. You know, strangers. You know, all the charities. So that's good deeds, and it comes out from your heart. The purer your intention is, the stronger your merit is, and the stronger your merit is, of course, your assistant will get much more elevated. And the best form, like Buddha's form, is no attachment. That means you do good deeds naturally. You don't try to do good deeds. I'm not trying to be good. Everything he do is good, without thinking, without needing to use consciousness. That's a very, it's like it's like using um, it's a, a high level computing machine compared to a 1950s calculator. It's very different, right? One is very minute, very precise. One is very rough and rough around the edges, something like that. So it's a it's a progress. So back to this question, cause and effect, right? If we kill, we get come out of getting killed. If you say this applies to vegetarianism as well. If you eat, you will get the karma of getting eat, eaten one day, or you have a karma of getting harmed. So this is something that is not based on, you know, emotions or anything. It's just law, like gravity. If you have you have in the sphere of the earth, you will get bound, and then you have this action and reaction, Newton's law. All these things not because Newton says so. It's because it's there. So karma, karmic law is if you try to avoid killing. Eventually, you get to a level. Of course, with the help of the teachings, you will get to a level where everything you do will not incur killing. Um, the intention is important. In act, in action, in real life action, you have to follow the rules. You have to understand that it's not just about you; it's about your entire community. It's not everyone thinks like that. Understand that. Fine. Then do what you can. You know, like trying to say if you don't have to kill, like right cockroach and anything. Leave the crumbs outside. If if you don't want to incur too much killing, leave the honey outside the uh, courtyard, so that the the end was redirected to there, and then you can move it out there. So give them a little bit. Um, if you have a farm or garden, dedicate a patch just for them. So the rest you take care of it. That patch is only for the animal. It's doable. There is a example of farmers. They seen the animals like eating their crops, so he just literally designated that area and say this is only for the animal, right? We're not gonna have harvest on that, and the animal kind of understand the intention and they move to the patch meant for them and they that's only what, eat. That's why they have the uh, Buddha nature. That's why they understand. They understand, <laughs> right? Not just not just between people. So mosquito as well. Okay, mosquito is a bit. I mean, I do, I do get angry sometimes with mosquitoes because they literally bite every single part of your existence. But the anger cannot, cannot be your motive. It's just annoyance. That's it, right? This little annoyance does not kill me. It does not stop me from moving anything. So why, why do I not need to take a life and incur myself more negative karma? So rationally thinking, I don't want to create more obstacle later, right? If you use the most selfish way to think. No more obstacle in for me in future, so I don't want to kill. It's an annoying little pest, but the reason why it's annoying is actually quite sad. In the past, maybe it, it did a lot of bad deeds to become like this little existence. So we should be more. If we can't get compassionate suddenly, at least think about karma that we incur. One little karma is nothing, but because one little karma is nothing, we can do more. Right, a little bit of money, right? Five dollars of gambling is nothing. So I can t- try ten dollars. I can try one hundred dollars. Eventually, one thousand. You mortgage your house and get all the money to gamble away everything. So just a little bit, like a little a little crack in the dam, will break. Eventually, will will, will, will collapse. In Chinese, 绝水之堤可以破什么的，忘记了。The Chinese proverb says that there is a little seam in the Of crack in the dam, eventually will lead to collapse of the entirety of dam and you know death and all that. 对，什么？千里之堤溃于蚁穴。千里之堤溃于蚁穴。蚁穴。Okay, I, don't, I still don't understand. <laughs> But thank you, Maggie. Yeah. So, do you feel guilty when killing bacteria or germs? Yeah, that's another question. Like when you use. 
when you use disinfectants. So this is this is the case of our world, right? Imperfection. There is no there's no win-win solution. It's gonna be I take something from you in order to complete something from me. And this condition is what is a it's a it's a negative cycle. It's a cycle of downward spiral. It gets worse and worse and worse. You know, an eye for an eye makes the whole world spine. And then or you know, look at the world right now, right? Look at the disaster right now. So this is the condition we are dealing with. And when you say, do you feel guilty when killing bacterial germs? You know, like I said, in practice, there's so many things in practice that does not, how to say, that sounds contradictory to, to, to nature. But this is a progression thing. Like I said, if you practice to a level of anagami, arahan, one level be below arahan, in early Buddhism, there's four stages of enlightenment. The third level of Arahant, before, right before Arahant, they have the ability to walk above the ground, hover above the ground. Once again, this sounds miracle to us, but this is actually our ability that we lost. You can walk above the ground without touching the surface. Everything you do, like when you shower or anything, there is a little invisible force that push away the not push away, that prevents the other sentient beings from getting close. So you have the ability of not killing by not trying. You don't have to do anything. Everything you do is non-killing. Why? Cause and effect. There is reason behind this, not, not because Buddha says so. Because you have committed to non-killing karma as best as you could. Hence, you will incur a good fortune of, you know, the ability of doing everything without harming people, even when you're not trying. This question is, you do what you have to do in hospital, right? They tell you to disinfect, you have to disinfect. Because not killing a, I mean, not killing a few bacteria will cost infection on, on other people. So the mindset is important in this case. You can't do anything but follow through this procedure, but your mindset should always be, may they be born in Pure Land. May they be, you know, may they be escape from this existence. You know, I, no one wants to be amoeba. It sounds like an insult, like, you know, your, your existence like an amoeba. But anyway, no, no one wants to be an amoeba. No one make a choice to be an amoeba. It has to take such a big foolishness and ignorance to become this level. It, it's, a, it's a lot of story to talk about. If you have that ability to see the past life, you'd be like, Phew. like back in Buddha story, there is a group of ants passing by him. He was sitting there and then Buddha like smiled very slightly. Everyone was like, oh, Lord Buddha, why are you laughing? I mean, why are you smiling? And Buddha was like, ah, I'm just kind of looking at this ant and think about how many reincarnations of Buddha already in this world and they still remain the same ant. So they've been ant for seven Buddhas, including him. For seven reincarnations of Buddha, you know, one Buddha to appear in this world takes, oh, I don't even know how to count. Yi, yi is 100 million, right? 100 million. Yi is 100 million. Yeah, 100 million. So, tens of thousands of million of years, or billions of years, uh, billions of years for Buddha to appear in one cycle. So, how it goes is Buddha appear, spin the cycle, talk about this karma, cause and effect, you know, the Four Noble Truth. And then he pass away, his karma, um, his cycle continues for a certain period of time, depends on the, the fortunes of that people. It can be long, it can be short. Cycle ends, begin another cycle. And then it do doesn't just begin as soon as the previous cycle ends. The cycle, there's a gap in between the cycles. And that gap is, we call it dark age. There's dark age as in there's no Dharma in between. All right, everyone get by. Maybe they can't get to six realms, but they still practice good deeds as well. Who knows? So there is a gap in between. And then there's another cycle. So seven cycles with gap in between included. So there can only be one Buddha at a time? Yeah. Why is that? Yeah. One Buddha at a time because it's like show, right? there's got to be one main character to put your attention to. If you want to see behind the scene, everyone is Buddha. They're just acting like student. Like Ananda, 
like Mahakasyapa, if you read Fahua Jing, I think, Fahua Jing or Hua Yan Jing, they're actually Buddha already. They're just acting like students. Because sometimes it only takes one to know other people. It takes a Buddha to ask a question that normal being could not think about. So they can be more than one Buddha? Yeah. But, but on the stage, like in our historical stage, they won't tell you directly. On historical stage, there can only be one Buddha on that era. The other Buddha, they are like supporting this Buddha performance. Think of a performance. Um, Morgan Freeman, Tom Hanks, all right, Matt Damon. So it's time for Tom Hanks to shine. But Morgan Freeman is a very experienced actor, isn't it? But in order for Tom Hanks to shine, Morgan Freeman is going to go out and become his side character to complement Tom Hanks' performance. And because they are chemistry so well, the performance works. Everyone focus on Tom Hanks as that main character. But it doesn't, make, doesn't mean Morgan Freeman is not the experienced actor. He's just acting as a supporting cast in this role. Next time, when Morgan Freeman comes out for his performance, Tom Hanks becomes his side character. So this is how Buddhism works. There's no like, I'm the main character, you're the side character. But why does it have to be one? Why can't there be multiple? Singles? Confusing. It's confusing for everyone. It's like, oh, well, there's too much. On, only when you reach the level of, you know, how to say, there is only one Buddha nature. And then everyone taps into their Buddha nature, naturally connects with each other. They don't have to think and talk. They, they just know what each other thinks. They, not think, they, they, they become one each other. They're unique, but they still become one each other. Like these three bulbs of light, they are unique beams of light, but they don't differentiate. There's no boundary in between light, isn't it? They merge together so put in harmony. So this is how Buddhism works as well. Like when Amitabha Buddha finished his time, I'm just giving you a spoiler already. Tomorrow, if you listen to his teaching, um, Venerable will say, when Buddha finished his time, we call it finite and finite this morning. That means Buddha, it's actually, there is a, there is a limit on the cycle, not because Buddha has limit. It's because rules of the game, that's how it works. The, the limit is so long that you can't see the ending. But when his time is up, Bodhisattva Guan Yin will step up, become a Buddha's role, and continue the Pure Land. Pure Land by then time will become a different name, but it will still be the same existence. Um, if we manage to make that in this lifetime, we'll be like senior, senior student anyway. But the point is, she will step up. Or she or he, there's no gender anyway. There's the Bodhisattva will step up. And when Bodhisattva step up, Bodhisattva Da Sizi will continue to be his uh, left hand, left hand Bodhisattva. And then when Bodhisattva Guan Yin get into Nirvana, he will step up. So there's a line of succession in Pure Land as well. But nothing is going to change because everyone cultivate purity. So there's no like in history you saw people killing each other to get the throne. Nothing like that. It's just, it's just how it works. So where do they go after they finish? Where did Amitabha, where did Sayamuni Buddha go after they finish? That's what a venerable talk about, the fourth one. Chang Ji Guang, ever illuminating light. The land of ever illuminating light of peace. That light is always shining because our true nature is shining. Wisdom is always there. And Ji is like cessation of suffering, cessation of life and death cycles. So they all go back to the same place. And then from the same place, they all appear according to your need. So for all, all case, we need pure land because it's easier for us to get there. So I, I'm not going too, too far. I hope, um, please ask, keep asking questions. Um, so yes, in practice, you have to do what you have to do because you're in the society. But in, in your mind, you can try not to rejoice and say, die, die, or something like that. There's another case. East German and West German, when they split up after World War II, a lot of people are trying to run to the West because you know this under US and Britain is much more free, it's less oppressive. So when the East German, because their own people, they're all Germans, like your own comrades, basically, your own brothers. And they ran across the, the boundaries and he shot. That's his job. He shot at the people who try to escape the boundary because it's a different country, so to speak. But after the unification of Germany, they have a court. 
about this thing. And they ask the soldier, I know you're doing your duty, but can you not miss the bullet? You're discharging your, you're doing your duty to protect the boundaries. Fine, you're in East Germany, you have to follow your boss. But you don't have to shoot that person. You can shoot behind him, next to him. Why do you have to shoot him? Right? That means if you're a soldier, Bao Jia Wei Guo, right, protecting the land, this guy is just a civilian trying to get to a better life. You don't have to kill him. You can just shot a few warning shots, saying that I try my best. Right? Like, uh, you don't have to kill him. But the, thing, the fact is that soldier <coughs> killed him when he doesn't have to. So there's so many little things you can do to save lives, even as a soldier on that job that you're supposed to kill people. Right? World War II, World War I, so many cases, they're trying to kill each other, then they realize that there's no point. So they sit down and have a cigarette and drink, talk about their wives and families. And then they say, okay, if I meet you again, good luck. And then they go on. There's so many little human story like this, right? That was supposed to kill you because of a soldier. But then I realized what's the point, right? There's no need for that. So exercise compassion when it's, when it's possible. Exercise um, humanity when we can. Even when the whole world is trying to tell you to kill each other. I'm pretty sure in Israel and, and, and conflict of Israel and right the Palestine, there's always this humanity stuff in between compared to narrative. It's people to people, there's nothing. It's always the karma right, of you know, people drive against one another. Um, oh, it's already 12.42. Guys, any questions? Any others? Feel free to bring up. Um, why is Amitabha Buddha the main representation of Buddhism? Because we're in Pure Land School. We're studying in Pure Land. Um, Buddhism, right, we have one historical Buddha, which is Sayamuni, as far as our human history is concerned, right? From him, he has 49 years of taught speech. He starts from the basics. He starts from, you know, the Four Noble Truths, how to be, understand karma, filial piety to your parents, like what you learn in Tizu Gwe, he taught. But in India, same thing, uh, how to become a good lay Buddhist, you know, good husband, good wife, earn money, you know, split your wealth into investment, donation, day-to-day -day expenditures in your family. So those are very daily stuff. Buddha talked about it as well. Um, and then stuff like that. And then also he went further into the juicy part, which is all the, you know, fan, the, you know all sentient beings came from, you know, same Buddha nature. You can talk about consciousness on his school. So there's so many things Buddha talks about, like a huge encyclopedia, right? But Buddha's goal are very clear. Everyone will become Buddha one day. And his goal is very simple, showing the way to those people who are ready, paving the way to those who are yet to be done, who are yet to ready. So those who are ready immediately becomes Arahant, the first level of enlightenment. They no longer bound by existence like this. They can come in and come out easily, no problem. Paving the way for people who are yet ready to go, which is us. He's there to show us an example with his students. And thousands of years after his passing, he paved the way for us. This is what Buddha did. This is what all the, the Zhu Sida, the, all the patriarch, you know, all the teachers did. So now, in this era, we have Master Qing Kong paving the way for us. And then we have Venerable Chen De, Venerable Wu Xing, Venerable Wu Zhuang, Venerable, they're all Venerables there doing their job, including Venerable today. So I forgot his name. Um, what's his name? Venerable Zhuang. Oh, yeah, Venerable, Venerable of today, uh, paving the way as well. So everyone's doing their job to show us um, the path. And it's our job to walk the path, find out what's suitable to us. And why we say Pure Land is the most um, common in East Asia, especially China, Korea, Japan, Vietnam, because it's convenient. It's just so convenient. It's, 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 so, it's like having a smartphone compared to having a Nokia back in 2000. It's just different. You know, because one smartphone replaced camera, replaced phone, replaced text message, um, computer, 
even some of the computer functions. So Amitabha is like, he's convenient, but he does not sacrifice quality. Sometimes when we have convenience, the yield we get from the convenience, that the result of using this com convenient means of practicing is we're getting lesser achievement, right? Because you sacrifice quality to get your result faster. But this case, this convenience yields you more than you can imagine because um, that's his power. Basically, he's trying to get, Pure Land School trying to get people with a, as low as, um, how does it, he, he lowered the, the entry requirement as much as you could, right? There are requirements and it's not easy for us, don't mistake it. But it's so much easier that anyone, they don't have to go 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, closing out and actually learn from one teacher on a prolonged period of time. All they need to do is to have constant immersion in the sutra. And of course, their own understanding. They need to learn about, you know, how to be a good person, you know, how to do good deeds, take care of your parents, take care of your family, those basics. And also improving their quality, less angry, less hate, less greed, less anxiousness. You know, those, we, we, we call it problems. We face a lot, anxiety and stuff. Reducing that using Amitofo, using the method. And it's a progress. It's going to be a struggle, but you can make it. So his goal is, no, if you really work hard, no matter what level you are, even worst of the worst criminals, right? People who kill their parents, people who kill their uh, children, all these bad people, if they really have that little bit of repentance in them and say, what I did is wrong. Now he's not denying it. I'm really guilty. And he met the word Amitofo. He met the teachings of Buddha, Amitabha. And he willing to chant Amitofo, Amitofo. And when he chants, right, he don't just chant so that people say you are a very good Buddhist. He chants because he's really sorry. He chants because he's really tired of being like this. He wants to get out of this problem. So when he has that level of sincerity, of repentance, of yearning to get out of the sufferings, when he chant that, he will make it. And he don't just make it there, become one of the, you know, small characters. He go there with the help of Amitabha's vow. He can go there. Like we mentioned about the only thing that changes in pure land is the flowers. That flower is not caused by Buddha. It's caused by us. When our vow is strong, the flower blossoms. And our vow is so powerful, we want to help other people to go to pure land. Our, our flower will become bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually, when times come, we will be appear in the flower. There's no parent, there's no husband and wife over there. There's no male and female over there. Everyone has only one assistant, which is Buddha. They have Buddha look. So everyone came from flowers. And from flowers came us. And how quick the flower opens depends on how strong is our vow. If we have doubts, but we're still practicing earnestly, like, ah, I'm not sure Pilan is a real thing, but why not? It's a good investment. You know, investment property, 50-50, right? And so this one has no, there's no risk, right? I'm still able to accumulate merit. So let's chant. So this is in chapter 40 something in, in the in Final Life Sutra. So mm. So they, they chant, 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 chant. And then they actually chant earnestly. They go to Pure Land, but they get trapped in the flower. And inside flower, there is a beautiful palace. You know, everything comes from mine, right? There's palace, there's, there's this pure stuff. There's no dirty stuff in there. But they, they, don't, they can't see other, each other. They can't see the Buddha. So they feel lonely. Their mind is pure, but they are, they are trapped in terms of, I can't learn the better method. I can't be connected with the world. So that's the only, even that is better than here, right? Because you are going to open up that flower. You're going to see the bigger world than we, we have ever seen. Because our world is only on earth. Buddha's world is many, many cosmos. Think of Marvels, you know, multiverse or something. He can see everything. He can go many, many worlds, right? So back to the point. Um, he's famous for a reason because his vow is very accessible. Aunties, uncles, people who are not learning Buddhism a lot, but their heart is very pure, very, very forward. When they chant Amitofo day to day, there's a lot, especially in China, there's like 
records of uncles and aunties, right? Zai Gong Zai Po, they literally just chant. They don't think anything else, they just chant. They don't even like study, understand and all that. They just chant. And then of course they eat vegetarian, they 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 were always smiling and then Master Ching will say, when you scold them, they're like, I'm in When you praise them, they're like, I'm in And then whatever you say, I'm in I'm in These kind of people go to Pure Land very quick. There's two kind of people who go to Pure Land very quick. First is the top of the top. Cream de la Croc, like Venerable Huynam, you know, Master Hai Xian. He's Cream de la Croc. Even though Master Hai Xian is actually the second type. The first type is rare. It's like a one in a billion, you know, people who just like Buddha himself. So he just came out and understand. That's most likely more like a performance rather than actually, because he already has attained enlightenment. People at the bottom, that's something we can learn. When, well, when possible, right? Trying to learn to be simple. People say simple is bad. You know, how do you do your job and stuff? That's why it does not, it's not easy to be simple as well. When, when your life forces you to be you know, all this calculating and stuff. There's no condition for it to be simple. So these uncles and aunties and grandmas and grandpas, they can just be simple and don't worry about, you know, Ren Bo Si Fei, you know, why is she saying like that? Why is he saying like that? I need to guard myself. There's no condition forcing her to be like this. They can focus only on pure land and they have nothing else to think about anyway. They don't have to worry about this and that. They, all they have is this little circle and they have you know, food and stuff like that, basic, all taken care of. And then all they do is just chant Amitabha for. Some gathering on New Year's Eve, some gathering on, uh, you know, on, on Qingming and stuff like that. That's it. So he's famous because he's reaching out a huge audience, like YouTube, like Google, right? He's famous because he's convenient. He's simple. He's simple, but he's not sacrificing the quality. The youth is so huge. No, normal people can't imagine like just chanting Amitabha for will get me to a level where I can be a Buddha. Come on, man. You're joking. That's a lot of people's mindset. Not just ordinary people. People who are working their way up like bodhisattvas of the middle level, like middle school people. High school, like we call, it, we call them professors, right? If we use a modern techno uh, understanding. Um, there is bodhisattva, but there are many levels and some bodhisattvas are in high school level. Right? So we are like preschool, so to speak. We haven't entered the first level of enlightenment. So we technically preschool. From preschool level, they elevate you to the professor level without, without going through high school, middle school, and, 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 and high school. What? Middle, primary school, middle school, and high school. They elevate you straight to professorship. So you go there, you understand everything they talk about, the quantum relativity, general theory of relativity, or, or the big, deep stuff. And you just know it and you know how to do it because of his vow. He's trying to make sure everyone review their Buddha nature in the shortest level. Why can you do that? Remember that. Why can we attain from such a human assistant, such an earthly, you know, messy assistant into such a elevated assistant where you can go through any world, anyone, and you can reincarnate again on your liking because you want to help them. Because we are like your first question, we are Buddha. There's no other way around it. We are Buddha. It's just we got twisted by our wandering thoughts, which is we need to look in, in words. Like, how do we put it in words? People say one, two, three. People say something. If people use wandering thoughts to hear other people saying, they will hear it as, oh, he's talking about me. He's trying to do something like, you know, prejudice and stuff like that. People with pure mind, they will understand that's what he said. And then he understands he's aware of the motives and everything, but he's not reacting. He's not allowing himself to be dragged into it. So that's, a re that's why he's famous. Even more famous than Shaimuni. Not because uh, Shaimuni Buddha is lesser than Amitabha. There's no lesser or more in between Buddhists. Buddha, Buddha, for Fo Dao Tong, Mio Gao Xia. Every Buddha and every method he teach is equal. Problem is, audience, the audience he meant for Amitabha Buddha is everyone. That means it can be ant, it can be pig, it can be chicken. Those are at the side. Main audience is human. And then any levels of human intelligence can take it. It doesn't have to be top, top, 
cream de la crop to understand. In Zen Buddhism, cream de la crop usually are the one that benefits the most from Chan, which is the one he passed to Mahakashyapa by plucking a flower. Um, what else? Theravada tradition in Thailand. Uh, Sri Lanka. They are usually meant for um, their traditions, rather, I would say. They are more Mahayana nowadays as well. They, they might, you know, they might be non-vegetarian because back then Buddhism is not a vegetarian mindset. They don't eat meat, they don't kill meat, but they eat meat when they were offered. So that's the only difference. It's called tradition. So, so other than that, meditation is still the same. Precept is still the same. The eight precepts we do today, they, they do the same. It's, it's Buddha's precepts. Um, and even them, they heard of Amitofo. Some of them wanted to have that as well. Because I worked so hard only to get a little bit of achievements compared to like the cruise liner that Buddha already prepared for me with all the luxury stuff in there. Why am I, you know, why, like, why I put the same effort, but if I put the effort with the help of cruise liner, like Amitabha, I can get thousand times of benefit compared to by, or by, by myself. Um, another thing to be careful about this is do not regard as convenient as an excuse to be lazy. So just because it's convenient does not mean it's like, uh, yeah, I can just, you know, do whatever I want and don't worry about things. No. Um, because we have our trouble. We have obstacles, right? As you grow up, you will realize more and more stuff is coming away. And sometimes you can't control yourself. Sometimes you feel like, why is everything spiraling out of control? I can't, sometimes I lash out. Sometimes I um, lost sight of this and I wasted so much time. And then sometimes I feel depressed. Sometimes I feel helpless. Those feelings are still there. And those feelings need to rely on us to solve it. And to solve it, we need to seek help. Right, seek help from Buddha, seek help from us, friends, seek help from the elders. Those things are still taking a lot of your energy. And one lifetime is barely enough to get yourself through. So think of real life, real situation, and think of crisis awareness. Use that mindset and think of this one as your last straw. Jiming Dao Chao, Zhu Yigong Jiming Dao Chao. The last straw of hope. The last life-saving device you have. Use that mindset towards Amitabha, then we will be grateful for his convenience. His convenience, just to make us able to pass the passing mark. We're just barely passing the passing mark. All right. Of course, I'm not saying that every one of you will be have the same. You, you guys will get better. The more purer, the better you are. That means the, 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 the higher your ability to solve the problems, inwards, inside problems, and of course, the external factors as well. You need to deal with that. Um, and the, like Liao Fans, you're able to change external environment by changing your internal karma. So if you have your house in order, by house, I mean your heart in order. And then when you deal with the world, good or bad, you're no longer getting in, in the level where you don't know what to do. Congratulations, you have grown your wisdom. And then you can use it in your career, in your family, your relationships. And then if these are all sorted, when you chant Amitabha, that taste is different compared to when you're messy, when you're full of troubles and wandering thoughts, even though you don't want it. And then you chant Amitabha. Still chant it, of course it will be less obvious. It will be harder because you, your mind keeps thinking. So Amitabha is usable in good and bad. The worse the situation gets, the more we need to chant Amitabha. So that's the real life, right? I'm not talking about sitting here in a comfortable place and chana for Those things, fine. But 90%, 80% of your life is out there. You have to deal with the situation out there. You have to deal with the people out there. You have to deal with 100 different things coming your way. So how do you do that? How do you have a mental resilience, mental strength? How do you have the wisdom not to act on your emotions, act on your rationality, act on your wisdom? How do you still have enough space to cultivate compassions and love towards your friends and families, your colleagues, your, 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 your world. Those are needed. Those qualities does not come from, from, from nothing. You have to cultivate that and emulate yourself after him is a good way. 
But if it's too far, immediately after real people in this world, right? Okay, so I, I, I think I'll stop in the last question. Tibetan Buddhism recognized some Hindu gods. Other form of Buddhism all practice different versions. Which type of Buddhism is correct? Like we mentioned, all Buddhism is the same as long as they follow the four Dharma Sus. San Fa Ying. Guan Sheng Buddhism. San Fa Ying. Sorry, what is Dharma Sus? Let me search. Oh, thank you, Google. Dharma Sus. So, to prove that uh, Buddhism is genuine, there's four Dharma Sus. Yes, I got it. <sighs> okay, so the four Dharma Sus is all compounded things are impermanent. Emotions are prone to. All compounded things are impermanent. Guan Sheng Bu Jing, Guan Shou Si Gu, Guan Xing Wu Cha, Guan Fa Wu Wo. Let me let me read Chinese. I like the Chinese one better. Fa Ying. Si Fa Ying or San Fa Ying? San Fa Ying, baby. Hmm. Uh, all phenomena, everything is impermanent, and there is no self in every phenomenon. That means there's no permanent. Everything is impermanent. Everything has no. We do not attribute false sense of self in every situation, right? And the last one is nirvana, is the ultimate form of bliss we can have. Nirvana means cessation of suffering, and this is the seal that is used to distinguish Buddha Dharma and other form of teachings. Not saying that the other form is lower or anything, but if you want to attain what Buddha has mentioned, these three must be, must be, um, uh, how to say. It? must be respected. Every form of Buddhism, if they respect these three Dharma seals, if they have the, if they teach about these three Dharma seals, they are actual Buddhism. So impermanence, non-self, Nirvana. All right. Um, who owns pure land? Who owns hell? Who judges karma? Um, pure land is constructed by Amitabha, but it's not owned by him. There's no title search or land search on that one. So there's no proprietary limited. That one belongs to everyone who can enter it. So it's a, it's a communist area in the sense. It's, land, it's owned by everyone. It, it's actually owned by every sentient beings. The problem is they can't tap into it. It's like your little beautiful place in your heart. You, you just can't because your mind is muddy with a lot of troubles on self-doubt. So no one owns pure land. Everyone owns pure land. No one owns hell. Everyone owns hell. Hell is when you have anger, hatred, you have intense level of emotions and, and, and selfishness. So hell is your own manifestation. Um, I'm not talking about in a way of, oh man, it feels bad. You know, uh, it, situations like hell to me, uh, actual hell that happens like pure land, but hell is actually constructed by accumulation of intense hate, intense, you know, negative deeds. You know, you harm people, you hurt people, you conduct, misconduct on people, you assaulted people in all forms. Who judges karma? No one judges karma. We call Yama King judges karma. But to be honest, Yama King is like, it's like a public government officials being appointed to do the job. He does not own the law. He does not own the, the instruments. He was appointed by the people to do the job. So if we have a story of Yama, Yama King or Hades in, in the Greek mythology or in Christian or you know, Abrahamic religion, they have all these God judges and this and that. It's because human, how to say, collective consciousness, we want something to be a figure of judge. So we, we created this persona to judge us. Not saying that they're not there, they can be there. You and I, if millions of us agree this is true and this is true, Right? This is a collective thing. Everyone recognize this as true. Then this becomes a law. Everyone recognize um, something. And that something becomes real. Because all phenomena arises from mind. No, if you have thousands and millions and billions of people are saying that this is true, then it becomes a sort of existence. Um, because we, we, we recognize it. Right? What you don't recognize ceases to exist. However, law is still there. Law of karma is permanent, not permanent. Law of karma 
is law of karma. It's not, no one created, no one stopped creating it. it. Cause and effect itself, right? If you have no condition, it will not become something. But cause and effect, conversion of cause into effect is a dynamic thing. How Buddha did is very smart is that they understand that cause and effect, right? Everyone will have to suffer their past deeds. We all have done that. How do you avoid that by going to Pure Land? Is you, you flood the condition by re-diverting your path. Your cause becomes so strong to Pure Land, it, it swarms over the other cause you've done in the past. So when you're in Pure Land, you no longer get affected by your past baggage. However, when you come back down on Earth, appearing as like Shaimuni Buddha, you have to suffer what you have to suffer. But you don't feel anything because you're no longer attached to the body. It's, it's like playing games. You know, your, your, your character get cut or your character get all the harms, you don't feel the harms. Something like that. Um, in Buddhism, everything is suffering. Why do I feel joy? To say suffering is everything, that would contradict because suffering can't exist without joy. Hmm. What do you guys think about this? Why is joy and suffering appear at the same time? Are they even the same thing? Ah, okay. It's like mm. joy is like the relief of suffering. Like say if you have a really yummy meal, the yep. meal only tastes good because you are hungry, right? Mm. Which is like the cuckoo, like the suffering, suffering. Suffering, suffering, yeah. So your joy is like the temporary relief from the suffering. So you think that's like the ultimate bliss, like the moment you buy anything, maybe you're happy. But well, that's only because mm. a temporary relief from that craving for new things. Mm. So it's not actually like the like and, and and that kind of joy is like say like hungry you eat thirsty you drink those are reliefs right and when you relieve you're happy but if you eat five more meals on top of that one meal you eat it becomes suffering so the joy becomes suffering in a very quick instant if we allow our greed to take over um, and same thing for um, yeah so these are not Permanent, impermanence. It's, it's why it's not permanent that makes it so painful. Like, oh, such a beautiful gathering here with my friends and family. And then we have to go. You have to depart. Or I've been, get, I've been sitting here for one hour listening to Dylan talking about. It becomes suffering as well. <laughs> because he just won't stop about that analogies. So it, it also, it can be many things, right? It can, it can turn into many things. So suffering... It's a foundation of our world. Not because you know, we want it like that. Because, like I said, we, we, have, we have perverted the ideas of what is joy, what is suffering. If we understand from people who awaken, joy is when you go back to your state of nature. When you go back to your ever-abundant nature, Buddha nature. Suffering is... is when you re when you separate it, as in when you're forcibly removed from your true nature, you will never remove. When you blinded of your own potential and follow this instinct, follow these um, impulses instead, and now you follow this impulse, commit more and more karma, and that karma comes back to you, engulf you in it, and then you get stuck into that existence. So the more you react to the karma as the ordinary people would, which is, you know, retaliate, um, greed, hoarding, or, you know, lust, and continue to follow that impulse, what we call normal, then you go forever trapped in that, right? And there's a story of Bodhisattva Guan Yin who cried, not because emotion sad. He looked at ascension beings, after all the work Bodhisattva has helped to get out and get into pure land or get into uh, better existence than they were, there's still so many people doing the jumping into the cliff thing. So all he can do is he shed two tears and one of the tears becomes lotus and one of the tears becomes, as a famous call, lü, lü mu, some other, lü du mu. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just a, another manifestation of Buddha's compassion. It's like, he's already attained enlightenment. He's a Buddha who appears as Bodhisattva. And he look at the sentient beings, he's still like, everyone's jumping to the cliff, even though the cliff is dangerous. 
But then the cliff has so much incentives that makes them want to jump. And that incentive is like, you know, wealth, fame. Um, it's easy for us to say it's nothing here. But when you go out there in the world, how many people can hold their compass, right? I myself, I, I get swayed so many times. It gets it's so hard to pull back. It's really hard to pull back. Those things makes you want to jump the cliff because it's so, it, is, it is enjoyable when you have that. When you have that feeling is there. It's like drugs intoxicating you. But when you pull yourself back and realize they're actually dangerous, the knife, the, the consequences is dangerous, right? Say if you indulge in um, unregulated, you know, pleasures in, you know, um, wealth, fame or lust and stuff like that, you have issues of, you know, corruption, bribery, you have issues of people um, bailing out on your partnerships because you are not a good judge of character, you have issues of regulation, government cracking down, you have issues of disasters taking away your money, all it takes is one disaster. Or you have issues of your children giving birth, I mean, born into your family and take away all your wealth. So your wealth, your, which is your source of joy, is taken away by millions of reasons. And because you only pursue wealth for the source of pleasure and you don't even think about the consequences. So you use wealth as a measurement, not rather a means to help people, but it becomes a pure measurement of your happiness. Just for example, then you do whatever it takes to get there, right? You step on many people, you, you hurt many people. And then in the end, you, you left with nothing, maybe with some wealth, but those wealth cannot last long. You die, you own inheritance, your children's taking over, your third wife or your fourth wife coming over and take over. Those things happen, real life. Your fifth wife or your mistress coming in and then your children as well, right? What else? Um, last, even worse. You have that, you commit that, all right? And then you, you get into a relationship without proper understanding of that person, character, and you get stuck with them for another 20 years, 30 years. All right? And then you regret it. And then you're like, oh. And then you have two kids with here. And then you have this problem. And then you, you hurt the kids because their families is not in peace. And you hurt your parents. You hurt yourself. And then you get more guarded against other people. Your mind is entirely twisted by this situation. Not of your own choice. So pursuing this pleasure of the moment that yields, if we not control it properly, using our rational and using our wisdom. Wisdom is the absence of, you know, confusion, absence of, um, wisdom is the, against ignorance, right? Ignorance is what we're talking about here. You don't know what actually happens behind the pleasure, right? behind the joy. We call it joy, but it's pleasure. Um, and then we pursue it, and then we realize the real pain of, of it. And then you come out of it very battered and hurt. And how do you recover from it? It takes time. It's not just, or oh, you know, I drug myself and forgot about it. Some people went from this situation into alcoholism, into gambling, right, into addiction. So those are very, very real problems that facing young people, old people, all sorts of people alike. Um, it is suffering. In the end of the day, it is suffering and, and what pleasure, little pleasure we have gives way to more suffering. So that's why Buddha was crying. He's not crying because of, uh, you know, he's giving up hope. There's no point. I mean, there's no problem for Buddha. He can always be there. He's always there looking at you, all sorts. Every part of you, he knows. Everything you do, he knows. He doesn't need to know. He, what, what you do is like what he do. He can just, he just understands. So the point right now is how many people can turn back? How many people can become him and help other people? So that is a joy. Real joy comes from you have endless pleasure coming from inside. Like Master made um, Chen De or Master Xing Wang said, the is from the inside. It flushes, it, it's waiting to come out from inside, from your heart. And you have so many to give. The more you give, the more you want to give. And that level of joy might sound cheesy from, from some point, but that joy is, is an endless engine of your action. Like Master Hai Xian, why he can push himself after 120 years, continue. Oh, oh. Another thing is he just want to go to Pure Land. The other thing is um, he has endless joy of giving. It's so painful for him in his early days. He keeps planting the land. He keeps giving away the crops without 
you know, charging monies. Madam Xu Zhe, right, she's 100 years old, taking care of 80 years old people. So those people in Singapore, 80 years old, looks older than her, which is around 100 years old. Or, she's still alive now? I think she passed before Master Ching Fong, way before. Mm. I think she was, sorry, she was 80, taking care of 60 years old. So she has this endless energy that keep pushing her forward. Master Ching Kong, he has endless energy to push himself, even though at 96 years old or 90-ish years old, he still managed to talk two hours, eventually one hour because of his breath. It's a painful process, but he, he has that energy to push forward, regardless of what people treat him, you know, kick him out of his own Dharma place three times. But the more he got kicked out, the bigger his performance is. He got kicked out of um, where? Taiwan and then into Singapore. For kick out of Singapore, because Singapore is quite international, he go into UNESCO. And then Australian Prime Minister uh, Australian Minister of Immigration back in two thousand was sending passport to him and say, please be our citizen. We all have to apply for PR, but he does not. He just sit there and then people are like, please be our citizen. US Department of Immigration, please be our citizen. So that is joy. While he's not joy in becoming famous, he's joy in able to be so contributive, even at the age of 96. Nowadays, we like, oh, retirement, 60 years old. Okay, cruise in Bali, Thailand, next, <laughs> Europe. And then after that, what? Uh, beautiful, you know, uh, trip in China and a beautiful trip in, 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 in Australia. And then what? Sit there, wait. No, that's not how you live your life. No, you want to be so useful the older you get. So useful that everyone you know, of every ages come to you and they were like, I learned so much from you. I can improve my own field because of you. So that's the person you want to be. And that's the joy of this lifetime, let alone going to Pure Land. Holy moly, you get to become more. So that's how it works. The bigger stage you get, the more you walk up, the more, the bigger your world is. That's how you get joy from. And the only way to do that is to let go of that tunnel vision on pleasure. You have to let go of that pleasure in order to get real joy. And that is hard because, you know, pleasure is something you relieve from suffering. And you're already suffering from the suffering. And you're like, like, you know, like, I need to get out of this suffering. So I'm going to take a little bit of that seat of, of, of drugs or whatever form of drugs. It can come in form of, you know, lust, come in form of anger, which is, you know, revenge, or come in form of, Greed, which is hoarding money, stuff like that. Anyway, sorry guys, get too far. What time is it now? Holy moly, one eighteen. Are uh, only Buddha, any Buddhas more important than the others? No, all Buddhas is the same. It's only important for you because you need to get out of this situation. We call it life and death. For you, you need to focus on one Buddha. Because you have too much, it's like, where are you going, right? Buddha is everywhere. He does not need you to pray and worship him. Buddha only needs you to, 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 to actually get out of your situation. That's his compassion. So you follow Amitabha, follow only Amitabha. Not saying that you should not listen to the, because it came from Shaimuni Buddha's teaching. So he, he's always our original teacher. But Amitabha is our Banjun, is in, it's a teacher that we follow in, in our whole life cultivation. I, everything I do, I dedicate towards Amitabha. I learn about other Buddhas, I praise their merits, and then I dedicate that merits back to Pure Land. So the main Buddha that I'm going to follow is Amitabha, in my case, because Amitabha gives me what I need at the moment, which is um, the directions, the guide. Even though I'm still confused right now, um, eventually I'll, my path will be clearer and clearer with Amitabha's help. And then, of course, with his condition. Because of him, because of Shamiri Daba, because of him, we have this place. That's a, it's a long way to get to here, but yeah. So you also have to choose your own main Buddha because you want to practice that path. So Shamiri Buddha's path is go to Hua Zhang Sujie, but that one is like right now, you go to practice Zen and stuff like that. But I would say no Buddha is more important than another Buddha. That's the basic understanding. You cannot say because I chant Amitabha, I'm looking down on the medicine Buddha. No. It's like, I like this light bulb, so I don't like that one. No, it's, they're equal. 
You just need to fo focus on one path so that you can get out of it yourself, get out of your condition. And then you can see what they see. You have the same level of existence as them. Then you don't have to worry about this anymore. Um, why do we pray to few Buddha only Amitabha Guan Yin? Like uh, what we mentioned, we only focus on them because we only have 80 years of life, sometimes not even there. And if we have to do so many things, we are putting our energy so thin, spreading so thin, we get nowhere. Even your career planning, your, your, your studies, you know, you, you're going to uh, high school, uni in a few years, and then you have to go to society and actually achieve something you want. You're going to have to put hours of hours of hours of practice in this to get better at your job get better in your connections and everything. That takes a lot of time, let alone going out of six rooms. You're going to take even more of your time to focus on it. So focus only something that actually talks to you. And then, and then you get more and more and be better and better because of this interaction. Regardless be relationship, career, study, or cultivations. Okay, um, does Buddhism want less beings on earth since everything is suffering? If so, should humans stop having children? Good question. Just, should, should humans stop having children? To be honest, can we? Can we stop people from having children? No, right? So that question itself is, to be honest, it's not. I think the point is, no, Buddhism, the point is how how do we have this world? It's a very good question. Right? This world arises from cause and effect. Cause and effect. Cause and effect. If this world is destroyed, right, everyone who still have connection to this world, they will be reborn in another planet. Right? The hell right, that was based on this world will be kind of like prison transfer. They will transfer to a hell of another world. So a human will be transferred to human of another world of similar fortune and merits. If not, a new world will be made in this regard. And no one is making it other than ourselves. Not just you and I, collectively. Collective, there's a two types of karma, gong ye, bie ye. Collective karma, gong ye. Bie ye is individual karma. Like say you, you get this path, you get that path. But collective karma is you both are under the same family. That's your collective karma. Your own journey is your individual karma. Your parents, your, yourself. So, Put it in the human world, same thing. This earth is collective karma. How did everyone go through this earth? Now you have this uh, life which is comfortable. Some people can't even finish three meals because they have no means. Some people are already being bombarded under shelters. So this is individual karma. They're all humans, but different conditions. So Buddhism does not promote more or less on this regards. All they talk about is no matter where you are, you want to improve your life, we're going to have to learn to let go of our attachment to hatred, ignorance, and greed. Only then you can see a world for what it is. And then you're able to move forward the best options. You, have to, you can choose the best path to move forward. So having children or not having children is two different scenarios. If you have children, you need to make sure the children was raised in an environment that you want them to be in, which is loving, caring, respectful, and also a um, healthy environment, right? That is a huge responsibility. There is another level of, another form of cultivation. Cultivation does not restrict in this temple. You, you don't have to be a monk to cultivate. You can cultivate in any forms. So if you don't have children, then you need to control over your, your own behavior in terms of um, you either walk towards the path of monkhood, which is a community to help you, or you Dedicate yourself in the volunteering activities or something. Um, either way, do not indulge in... There's different temptation for different path, different obstacle for different path. Right? With family, that's one thing. Without family, you know, because you're single and all that, you have to be careful of that kind of temptation. So you need to work on, all right, since I don't have family, I'm light, you know, not burdened in that regard. What do I need to do? How do I contribute myself, right? My job, yes, there's only one part. What about other things? Volunteering, communities, you still need to dedicate on to something. Yeah. If Buddhists should let go of worldly attachment, should I detach from my parents, friends? No. Um, last Saturday, we talked about 
Venerable talk about emptiness is not not doing anything. So the undoing, the the the, the wu wei, you know, in in Taoism, is not saying that you sit there and don't do anything. That's a wu shou zuo wei. No, this mm, this emptiness, right? This um, letting go of attachment, fang kan bo fang xia, si zhu let go, is when you do good, you don't attach to the deeds of good. You don't attach to you doing good. You don't attach to them owing you a favor because you do a good deed to them. You do it because it's the right thing, and you finish doing it. Make sure they are taken care of, and then you move on. Right? They remind you again. You like, oh, it's, it's right, but you don't remember about it. You you let it go. So you continue to do your responsibility, do your job, you know, your homework, your commitments, your KPI, whatever, because it's your job, and of course it's exciting as well if you have good achievements. So. Take pleasure in little things like that, right? But eventually, things move. You have to move forward. So you have to let it go. So don't let go of any like your responsibility. If you have to take care of your family, take care of your family. Just don't get. I can't say just don't get. Um, use Buddhism to help you in this path. You can walk a bigger platform out of it. So you don't get stuck in the dramas. You you're able to let go. You're able to uh, take in the, uh, like some people humiliate you in this process, or some people not being appreciative. You don't be. You don't think about it. You just like like I did my best. Now I don't have to worry about it. I move on. That's the advantage. You can do even more with that. Last one. Can you reincarnate as a plant? Then it's being vegetarian just as bad as being a meat eater. So what? What's the what's the rationale behind that question? So you feel like reincarnate any anything living. So you can incarnate in any living, living beings, right? Um, no, we won't be a plan, but there is something. The trees yeah, tree spirit. You can be a tree spirit, but if you really like your plants, like that one particular flower at your place, you might be incarnated as a bees or as the. Uh, There's a story, all right. Let me tell you, a monk back in ancient China. They love the books. They love the sutra. See, attachment comes in many forms. Even for monks who read the Dharma Sutra, they should not attach to the sutra. They should use the Dharma lively and go to pure land or go to somewhere there. But instead, the monk really likes the book, the smell of the book, and everything. So you see, the attachment becomes the book. So when he passed away. When other people are trying to take care of the, the the sutra book time to time, they open up and they say there's a little ant,、uh, there's a little su chong, bookworm, a bug, right? Yeah, book bookworm, book bug in there, and, and then people can see past it. It's like, oh, this is the monk, because he's so attached to the book. So same goes for trees and plants. Yes, you can be spirits or animals in the plant that live in the bamboo or in trees. Because you attach to it, so you become what you're attaching to, right? Does it make sense?、But、yeah. What about the actual tree? Is that what called the tree? No, it's just a. In Buddhism, we call it 依报正报 So 依报 means it's like you are the main cause, and then those are all how to say satellites. There is a hub and spokes, or main、uh, main core and satellites. All of you are a core in your own life, and satellite can be us. So for Emily, you are the core.、So、all of us are satellites. For me, I'm the core. Everyone is satellite. So this is interchangeable terms, right? So trees and flowers and earth and constructions, those are satellites. We are all the cores. Trees, right? Apparently, trees' height is according to human height as well. As in, this natural world will follow your own. Um, conditions, so no tree will not be by itself if there's no human in it or something like that. If、um, like spirits can live in trees, that's true. But tree itself,、um, it's actually quite special. Is it, is it right? Like the tree spirit is not the tree itself; it's the spirit living in the tree. Yeah. And then usually living on the, like the tree or the tree meters high. Mm. Mm. They're too young. The small trees, yeah. yeah. Like pure land, right? They have beautiful, you know, like they have birds. They have birds in pure land, but 
There's no animal realms in birds. Why are we having birds in Pure Land? Because birds are manifested by Buddha to, because we love the chirping sound in the morning. So they were like, okay, you like your birds, so we'll just give you some chirping, beautiful chirping sound. And they don't just chirp that we don't understand, they chirp the Buddha Dharma Sangha. So even when you wake up, you hear about the Dharma. Like something we talk about today, but in much more details. And then every single moment, it will not be frustrating. You don't like the Diamond Sutra, you will switch channel to Infinite Life Sutra. If you get sick of this Infinite Life Sutra, they will switch on to uh, Flower Adornment Sutra. All sorts of sutra, even the names we haven't heard of. It will come out, as long as it, it comes out from true nature, so it won't be twisted. So everything you hear is improving your existence. Every, even the water talks Dharma to you. Like if you feel, if you swim in the water like the hot spring, you swim in the hot spring, you can, you can in Sutra say you sit, you can stand in the hot spring, you can swim, and then you can even lay back and relax. So it's a very chill area. It's like a pool party, but without all the mess. Everyone is actually improving the assistant over there. So that's why Pyongyang is so lucrative. It's not a boring place. It's not like everyone just... No. There is a main hall where everyone is very dignified and listen. That is your main body. And then you will be split into thousands of existence, doing thousands of things. Um, but vegetarianism is still encouraged. Yes, it's not during Buddha's time, but it was implied in the sutra. Non-killing, compassion. Especially we go Mahayana because China is a Mahayana uh, aspirant country, right? I'm not saying that everyone achieved that, but aspirant, they want to be Mahayana because they have the you know, mindset of Tianxia, you know, the world. You know, everything is for the world, not just myself. So with that cultural background, it, it, it matches so well with Buddhist, the Bodhisattva part of Buddhism, where I want all sentient beings to be liberated before I liberated myself. So that forms into vegetarianism, where I don't think I should eat meat. Because one of the sutra, Fan Wang Jing mentioned about So one of the precepts for the Bodhisattva is do not eat sentient beings' meat. Because you eat them, they feel the pain. The process of getting this meat is hurt, killing, separation from the parents. So using that spirit principle, we don't eat meat. That is compassion. There are many other reasons, but Buddhism is because of compassion. Um, so I'll stop there. I'll, we, we still can't encourage vegetarianism. Um, we can't stop other people. We should not shove it in their face and say that, but we should promote this in our own space, in our own... People ask you, you tell them. Compassionism. We, we are compassion. We do not want to kill. Um, yes, there are unfortunate situations where you have to kill bacteria. A lot of people argue with me like, Oh, so what about plants? You eat plants. Aren't plants having feelings? Sure, but if I cannot eat and still alive, sure. But now I have to eat, right? So I have to eat plant rather than animal because plant does not have... That is, plant itself is not animated, sentient being. Yeah, sentient beings. If I want to go really deep, yes, they can be sentient beings, but let's not go there. All right, yeah. I hope, I hope it's good enough. I hope, I'm sure Venerable Chengde will give you like very um, nuanced question. I will record what he say in English and then I'll share it with you. Do you have WhatsApp or WeChat? Yeah, okay. I'll share it with everyone as well. It's, it's good to hear. You have my phone number, you can just add me in WhatsApp. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. Um, one hour and a half. Is that what we have? <laughs> Oh God, let's do it, let's do it. Uh, let's dedicate our merits and um, then we chant 10 times Amitofo. May the merits and virtues adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above and relieve the sufferings from the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this or aspire, uh, or aspire to understand the Buddha Dharma, then Vow to be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Amitofo. Let's chant ten times Amitofo. 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 
阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。Three three bows to Buddha， 一拜，七，再拜，七，三拜。问讯。Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Amitabha.